it will probably take a few more years until we can finally see Frozen 3 in theaters. Nevertheless, several theories about the plot of the third film are already circulating, even though there is no footage and no official information available. Regardless of whether it's about a love story, reunions you could do without, or spunky surprises, the fan theories truly cover it all. In order to bridge the time until an official announcement, and to fuel your anticipation a little, we have summarized the best theories for you in today's original video. Before we start, we'll briefly recap the ending of the second part for you, so anyone who doesn't want to hear any spoilers should skip ahead now. We will also quickly go into the individual character developments between movies 1 and 2. Let's be honest, there is quite a bit that should be briefly reviewed. Anna realizes that the only way to free the Enchanted Forest from the Magical Mist is to destroy the dam. This was the one her grandfather had built for the Northaldra on the basis of false promises. Although she knew that the water masses would destroy Arendelle, she got the Earth Giants to tear down the dam. This releases Elsa from her curse, allowing her to escape from Otto Holland. She also finds that she is the fifth elemental spirit, which must restore the balance between the spirits. She rides towards Arendelle as fast as she can on the enchanted horse Nock to save the city from destruction. She is even able to bring Olaf back to life, who fortunately still retains all of his memories. After all, as we have learned, water does have a memory. Kristoff also finally manages to propose to Anna after two long hours, and Elsa realizes that her future lies not in Arendelle, but in the enchanted forest with the Nertholdra and the spirits. So in the end, Anna does become queen after all. So it can't be said, Frozen 2 was more than just a feast of emotions. Suspense, feelings, jokes, everything was provided. Especially the character developments, in contrast to the first film, were clearly visible. Fan favorite snowman Olaf, who was mostly known for his childish emotions in the beginning, suddenly starts asking profound questions about life in Frozen 2. So one could suggest he's growing up. Kristoff is no longer just the uncouth Iceman. Instead, he grows into his role as a slightly different Disney prince. He also works hard on his boyfriend traits and spends 75% of the film figuring out how to propose to Anna. She, on the other hand, is hardly recognizable. There is not much left of the naive princess from the first part. Rather, she is struggling more than ever to keep her family together and to make sure that everyone protects each other. In the end, it is her who is willing to make great sacrifices to restore peace between the spirits. Now, Elsa has to finally overcome her fear and acknowledges what she is, although she doesn't even really know that at the beginning of the film, obviously. In search of the truth, she comes increasingly closer to her true destiny, until she finally realizes what she is at the end. Thus, she can finally leave the chapter of being a queen behind her and follow her destiny. Last but not least, we still have Sven, of course. Though what can we say? Sven is perfect as he is. Because, let's face it, reindeer are better than humans anyway. After it took almost two whole movies for Princess, uh, we mean Queen Anna, to finally get married, fans all across the internet agree that it's slowly but surely time for Elsa to find her great love as well. The question that arises now is, of course, who? Do we already know her future husband? And this is exactly the point where we intervene and say, who is even talking about a future husband? Anyone who watched the second part attentively must have noticed that there was always a bit of chemistry between Elsa and the Northaldra Honeymaren. We would be very happy for the two of them. Elsa actress Adina Menzel also said in the run-up to the second film that the relationship between the two reads as if many things point to a love story in the third part. We all know that love is an open door. Still, even if Elsa fails to find the great romance, she will certainly be busy with all sorts of things in the third installment of the series. After the mist is lifted and the enchanted forest is now free, this naturally harbors all sorts of dangers. As seen in part one, Arendelle not only has allies, as there are also countries that look upon the kingdom with envy. So it's quite possible that the one or other villain wants to use the power of the spirits in order to plunge Arendelle into chaos again. Although, needless to say, they would have to get past Elsa first. But not only are there dangers lurking from the outside, in the past, many people from Arendelle itself were reluctant, if not distrustful, of magic. Above all, Anna and Elsa's grandfather, King Runeard. Therefore, it would be reasonable to think that there could be another plot against the Northaldra and the spirits of the forest, which must be thwarted by Elsa. Elsa, now known as the Snow Queen after Part 1, is renowned as being capable of turning anything into ice. But what about Anna? Does she really have no more powers beyond her courage and willingness to give her all for the ones she loves? Fans of the internet aren't sure, and an increasing number of rumors suggest that Anna learns she can control fire. Hints about this can be found in the film if you search for it. The most obvious one is, of course, that her sister possesses powers. Moreover, Anna herself has red hair, the color of fire, for example. 
whereas Elsa has white hair, matching her ice powers. Yet the character traits of each also match their abilities. While Elsa seems rather calm, reserved, and a tad cold, Anna is consistently hyperactive, wild, and unstoppable. A conceivable scenario would be that Anna acquires her abilities and is unable to cope with the destructive nature of fire, much like her sister in part one. Elsa must then rush to the rescue and help her deal with the power of her newly acquired talent. Absolutely a scenario that we would find more than just exciting. A rumor that is spreading through the internet, but that everyone hopes is not true, is the return of Hans. You guys don't remember exactly who Hans is? Well, it's understandable that you forget about that little creature, so we're going to jog your memory one more time. He is the youngest of 12 brothers from the royal family of the Southern Islands. Recognizing that he will never amount to anything in life, he tries to overthrow Elsa. In fact, he almost succeeds in doing so by pretending to love Anna, who was still very naive at the time. He will surely not be able to enter Arendelle simply like that again. But with the Enchanted Forest, a whole new world is opened up for him. It would be conceivable that he would like to get hold of the forest similar to the kingdom. Besides, it would not be totally out of the question that he might try his luck with Arendelle once again, now that the mighty Elsa is no longer queen, perhaps with the help of his brothers, or possibly with an army. At the end of Frozen 2, there is much talk about Anna's big day, but it quickly becomes clear that this is not about her marriage to Kristoff. Rather, it's about her coronation, so it remains to be seen whether the two have even gotten married yet. If they haven't, we really hope to see their wedding in the third part, not only since they aren't the typical Disney couple, but also because the wedding could be the focus of a larger story. What if Hans came and kidnapped Anna? Olaf, Sven, Kristoff, and Elsa would then have to go looking for her in order to rescue her. Possibly, Sven and Kristoff would crash on one of their tours, although that would be a little too lackadaisical for a Frozen part for sure. No matter how the story surrounding the royal wedding might turn out, it is clear that we absolutely want to see it. The only royal wedding that we would actually watch in theaters. One perspective focuses on the narrative where the two sisters are satisfied where they are, with Anna as Queen of Arendelle and Elsa with the Nertholdra folks in the forest. So it could make sense to concentrate more on Kristoff, who may be left with some baggage to unload. For instance, contemplate his parents' mystery. Kristoff is the initial main character we probably encounter in Frozen, and he emerges as a boy. We actually see him being kidnapped by trolls. The assumption is that he is orphaned, with no relatives until he is taken care of by the fantastical beings. But what if Kristoff's folks are still living somewhere and return to find their son married into the royal family? So far, the films have always focused on the protagonists overcoming past problems in order to build a brighter life. For example, Kristoff finding his parents and forming a bond with them will remain. There are numerous alternatives here. For one aspect, it could start playing into the quintessential trolls are actually wicked theory, particularly since it is discovered they kidnapped Kristoff from his parents as a kid. But what could be the reason behind that? This theory would investigate Kristoff's past and bring him some peace to live his present. Another Frozen 3 theory suggests that there will be an antagonist situation, hence strongly implying that warfare is a real possibility. The potential is that a different kingdom will attempt to try to invade and occupy the Enchanted Forest, forcing Arendelle to intervene militarily on their account. A monstrous enemy will be actually presented, who will be incredibly difficult to beat, even with Elsa's skills and knowledge. This villain's henchmen could potentially conduct warfare against all of Arendelle. It is possible that they will journey to the middle of the desert or tropical country to discover more about this supervillain, as winter and autumn have already been covered in the previous movies. It would indeed be fun to see Elsa and Anna in a different environment, and also to comprehend how helpful and effective Elsa's powers are in such a type of environment. Though, not only Anna and Elsa could be made the focus of the events, many fans would certainly also be happy about a prequel to the Snow Queen series, in which the adventures of their parents are illuminated in more detail. The story around King Agnar and Queen Aduna is capable of filling more than just one movie. Now that we know how the two met, many questions remain unanswered. What happened to Aduna after the catastrophe in the Enchanted Forest? She surely did not stay at the royal court, so how did she grow up? After what happened, her life as Northaldra must not have been easy in Arendelle. On the other hand, it would also continue to be exciting around Agnar. After all, he became king overnight, and he was still a young boy without a father. The first years of his regency would provide suspense on the screen for sure. Finally, their love story could be told, which would surely be almost as thrilling as that of their daughter, though there are plenty of other characters from Frozen that have exciting stories as well. Lieutenant Destin Matthias, for example. Many people would surely be interested in what became of the soldiers from Arendelle after they were trapped in the mist, or what the life of loyal Matthias was like before the disaster. Not only him, but also Olaf, Yelana, the trolls, Oaken, and Sven. 
All of these characters have the potential to fill a film in which the two sisters would at best play a supporting role. So that was it. Our theories for a possible Frozen 3. Which ideas appealed to you the most? Or do you even have one that we didn't take up at all? Let us know in the comments down below. If you liked the video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up. Apart from that, it's just a matter of time until we finally get our hands on some official information. See you next time. Yeah.